At 31 seconds, we go to a fully automatic computer-controlled launch sequence, checking just thousands of parameters per second. Even checking the main engines after they're lit at six seconds, that they reach 90% thrust and everything's normal. All right. Uh, all systems are go. That's the report we're getting from the Launch Control Center here at uh, the Kennedy Space Center. That's the President and the First Lady getting up to see the launch. Let's just listen for the rest of the way. T minus 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Four. You're in mission control. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8. We have a go for engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes and one American legend. Houston Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. One minute and 50 seconds into the flight, Discovery now at an altitude of 25 miles, traveling at a speed of 2,900 miles an hour. The next event will be burnout and separation of Discovery's twin solid rocket boosters. Capcom Susan Still informing the crew that in the event of a single engine failure. Houston, performance nominal. Copy, copy, performance nominal. Discovery could now reach the transatlantic abort site at Banjul. However, telemetry indicating all three engines continuing to perform well, and Discovery's performance to this point, two and a half minutes into the flight, has been as expected. Discovery now traveling at a speed of 3,500 miles per hour at an altitude of 43 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 70 miles. All systems are continuing to perform well. That cloud's reminiscent, isn't it? Three minutes into the flight, Discovery now traveling at a speed of 3,850 miles per hour, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at a distance of 86 miles. Just about five minutes of powered flight remaining on board. Three minutes or so into the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. Everything is nominal, as NASA would put it. The president watching with binoculars, the first lady beside him. The critical period of this flight everyone talks about is when the solid rocket boosters are uh, attached to that orbiter. I think everybody breathes a sigh of relief who knows a little bit about the space shuttle when they separate, don't you? Uh, That's true. It's a smoother ride afterwards. That's five million pounds of thrust uh, that you've let go. You've used it all, and you're on the main engines. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's always critical, though. Let's keep an eye on all this. What's, what's going on right now, Bernard? 
Well, what's happening right now is, uh, as Dave said, we've got rid of solid rocket motors. Everybody inside is breathing a sigh of relief, and you can tell here at the launch site control center, people are, are also. Um, and, of course, the main reason that's the Challenger accident, and that's the most critical phase of the flight. So now the crew is uh, sort of laying back and taking it all in, but physically, it's still the physical ride. Very violent ride, very noisy on the inside. Uh, it's hard to talk to your fellow crew members. And right now, the G load is beginning to build up. And uh, we'll go uh, just after the solid rocket motors are released down to one and a half Gs and work our way up to about three Gs. Right now, if we lose one engine, we can still make it across the Atlantic on two engines for an abort site. And that so, would, in this case, be Banjul the Gambia. And uh, at what point do we get to what is called the abort to orbit or abort once around mode? At four minutes, 12 seconds, we can make it to orbit without that engine. We'll press on up to orbit. We'd prefer that. We have Presto Mico right now, Dave, is what we just got the call. We're up to Presto Mico at this yeah. point, that we can get all the way to main engine cutoff, a nominal orbit, even if we lose an engine. So we've got redundancy in the main engines right now. So this is the critical moment when we say you're headed to orbit, right? That's right. right. Unless we'd lose two engines. Then we could still do a transatlantic abort. Every inch of altitude you gain is in your favor. That's right, and speed. And speed. It's, it's speed really and altitude. Speed is critical to get you safely in orbit. Uh, we have to reach what's, what was uh, termed in the old days escape velocity. That's uh, around 17,000 miles per hour to uh, work against the pull of gravity. So that's what we're working at right now. Three main engines still up and running on board and discovery. That call was that Discovery could make it to the transatlantic abort site at Banjul in the event that two engines should fail. But all, all right. three engines are continuing to perform as expected. Discovery now downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 385 miles, traveling at a speed of 9,100 miles per hour at an altitude of just about 68 miles. All right, what they just said is if they lost two engines, they could still do a transatlantic. Still abort, make it transatlantic, is, uh, and momentarily we should be able to get to orbit even with the loss of one. Uh, actually, we're past that point. Doing good. Looking right, very we are, good. We are going to take a replay of that launch because i got to tell you, that was a spectacular sight. And this picture that we saw today was extraordinary. Not a cloud in the sky here. Let's, uh, let's roll the tape back and take a look. Five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes and one American legend. Lisa Malone with her words. Discovery, six, roll seven. program. Roger roll, Discovery. The words that have been such so anticipated. Right, you can what really you, feel that roll. Well, give me a sense of what the uh, the educated eye is looking for as you go up uh, and as you watch a launch that you're not inside. Well, we're looking for a very controlled roll that rolls directly to the azimuth that we desire and then stops and is stable. Well, that's really critical because that's going to head you in the right direction, of course. When you lift off that much power, you want to make sure that you are going in the direction that is necessary for proper insertion. Uh, on my flight, we actually had uh, probably the, the most roll uh, trying to make it to the Mirror Station. And uh, there were a lot of nervous people because we had to roll about 90 or so degrees and stop. Uh, basically on a dime, and at that point we did go past a little bit, but then corrected and headed off our direction. Again, this is a laboratory going up to orbit. We only want to pull three Gs. We throttle the engines back in the last two minutes of the ascent to hold the Gs down to three because it has delicate instruments. This is also the 25th flight of this vehicle, and uh, we can't do seven and a half Gs like John Glad did, uh, did on his first launch on a vehicle meant to go one time. Good point. If you had to make all your experiments able to withstand 9 Gs, you'd have uh, some serious problems. 3 Gs makes it uh, a little more realistic. We're going to exactly. watch this to the solid rocket booster separation, which was really rather spectacular. You could see, this, see them sort of lazily tumbling through the air before the chutes would uh, deploy and they would land off in the Atlantic and be recovered. Of course, to say they're recoverable is perhaps a euphemism. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on these boosters to make them flight ready again, right? They really, really are. Uh, once these come off, they are picked up out of the ocean and towed back. Here they go. Sit in salt water for a, a long you know, time and they have to be refurbished. Compared to the sophistication of this 
vehicle and its boosters. How primitive that flight 36 years ago seems. Do you know what John Glenn's assignment was at the time that his, his booster fell away and he was in the craft of Benza? His one assignment was to keep his eye on the booster because they wanted to know how far a man could see in space. Hmm. It shows where we've come. At that time, we wondered if humans could even see. Their eyeballs might change shape. Could they yeah. digest food? Would their blood pressure be regulated? We had basic questions. We've gone so far beyond that yeah. in our research now. Yeah. All right. Well.